of these disorders, the cost to the public health care system. It's clear that the aging population and Alzheimer's have economic impacts that are significant, but beyond that, there are human and social costs, which I think are often underestimated. Isolation, exclusion, the loss of autonomy or independence, these are things that should guide government policy. It's also a matter of dignity and compassion and uh, sensitivity to the emotional burden and psychological burden for families and loved ones. These people need all the compassion and support the government can give them through its policies and programs. The loss of memory and independence, changes in behavior and ways of communicating, thousands of lives are turned upside down by Alzheimer's and other dementia. The difficulties are huge, not just for those suffering from Alzheimer's, but also for their caregivers, families and friends who provide them care. Eighty percent of home care for seniors is provided by unpaid family caregivers. It's also been shown that the, the more serious the disorder, the greater the stress on the caregiver. And that's why the Bloc Québécois feels it would be important to increase tax credits for family caregivers and to relax the requirements. Given the aging population and the pressure this puts on families and the health care system, it's also important to recognize adequately the contribution that these men and women make in providing care to their loved ones. Improving the guaranteed in income supplement, the GIS, is a good way of taking into account the seniors' right to dignity, the, the right of poor, the poorest seniors who may have Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is scary, and I'm sure that many of my colleagues will agree that one day or another we'll all be touched either directly or indirectly by this disease. According to a report of a, an ex, a group of experts, one-fifth of baby boomers will be impacted during their lifetime. The head of the committee of experts, Dr. Howard Bergman, identified seven priorities that should guide the government of Quebec in developing a national plan for Alzheimer's. Before going any further, I just want to reassure my colleagues when they hear me talk about a national plan. The Bloc Québécois, when we talk about a national strategy, of course we're referring to the nation of Quebec, and the Quebec National Assembly has jurisdiction over developing care plans and care delivery. So, to come back to Dr. Bergman, he identified seven priorities for Alzheimer's, seven things that can be done to promote synergies, to better respond and support the families of those with Alzheimer's. Let me just give you a few deta details. One of the first things is to have outreach and awareness raising. One role that things like the Quebec Alzheimer's Federation can do. And I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate all the individuals, employees, and volunteers who help to uh, alleviate the burden of people with Alzheimer's. These people deserve our admiration. Another thing Dr. Bergman identified was to ensure ac access to individualized and coordinated assessment and treatment services for people with Alzheimer's and their family caregivers. If the federal government wants to take into account the increasing cost of treatment, the best way to do that is to allow Quebec and the provinces to, to bear those costs by fixing the fiscal imbalance. That way Quebec would be uh, better able to develop services to the public that would be adequate. Madam Speaker, at this point, I'd like to thank the member for Edmonton Leduc, who, when I asked him the question whether, in his way of seeing things, this motion would respect the division of powers, and the member for Edmonton Leduc encouraged me to bring a friendly amendment to his motion. Just to clarify, the jurisdictional aspect of his motion. So, 
I move, seconded by the member for Chambly Bautroua, that the motion be amended by adding after the words the government the following. With respect to matters coming under the legislative jurisdiction of the Parliament of Canada. I must inform honourable members that pursuant to Standing Order 93.3, an amendment to a motion, amendment to a motion at second reading of a bill, can only be moved with the consent of the mover of the motion. In Leduc for his, uh, uh, whether he consents uh, to the amendment being moved. Oui, absolutely, Madam Yes, absolutely, Madam Speaker. Is there for uh, receivable in order? Okay. Okay. Uh, res resuming a debate, uh, the Honourable Member for... Elmwood Transcona. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I'm very pleased to uh, speak to the member's uh, motion today. I just have to get my uh, notes in uh, notes in order here. Um, I think at the beginning, I would like to uh, to read the uh, the motion uh, for the uh, for the house and for uh, anyone uh, listening today. Um, motion M five seventy four. Um, from the member for Edmonton, Leduc, uh, states that in the opinion of the House, the government should continue to address the rising financial and human costs of the Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia in Canada by in ensuring now and in the future that its programs and policy development related to this issue continue to recognize A, the right to dignity and compassion of patients stricken by such conditions, and B, the emotional and psychological toll on family members and friends of, of patients afflicted by such conditions. And number C, Madam Speaker, the increasing costs imposed on public health systems by the treatment of such conditions. And D, the role played by such civil organizations as the Alzheimer's Society of Canada and the Neuro Neurological Health Charities Canada in furthering our understanding of the impact of Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia. And I really think that it's very important for uh, this member and uh, members of this House to, debate, to de be debating uh, motions such as this, given that this is a very important, uh, important disease and certainly one that is increasing in, in, uh, in, in severity as the uh, population ages. And there are a number of uh, interesting uh, solutions and suggestions that uh, members uh, have suggested in terms of uh, dealing with the cost of uh, rising cost of medications, uh, help for the uh, families of people with, uh, with Alzheimer's, and the uh, whole issue of uh, tax credits, whether they could be improved. I can tell you that certainly from a provincial uh, point of view, I have uh, m members in my uh, constituency that have uh, Alzheimer's, and uh, I know that in, 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 in at least one specific case, the uh, husband is, has the disease, and the, uh, the wife um, is, always tells me when I see her each year uh, how important it is for uh, Manitoba uh, Home Care to provide her with that, that, uh, that service once a week to allow her to, to go out and to do her shopping, to go to Safeway and do things she has to do because she's literally tied to her husband the rest of the week because she never knows whether he's going to, you know, wander away uh, when, she's not, uh, when she's not available. And she's, she is certainly under a lot of stress in, that, uh, in, in her situation. Now, on January the 4th of, of this year, the uh, Alzheimer's Society of Ontario produced a report that uh, other members have made reference to in various debates in the, uh, in the House. 
and uh, basically the, uh, the suggestion is that the rising tide of dementia is projected to cost Canadians $872 billion over the next 30 years. So clearly this is a, a, a ballooning problem and something that we have to, to uh, come to grips with and deal with and try to, to deal with as best as we can. The report uh, released by the Alzheimer's Society um, to mark Alzheimer Awareness uh, Month revealed alarming new statistics about the projected economic and social costs of dementia in Canada and recalls the rising tide, the impact of dementia on Canadian society, said if nothing uh, changes, the prevalence of dementia will more than double in 30 years with the cost increasing tenfold. And they go on to say that today someone in Canada develops dementia every five minutes in 30 years, that will be uh, one new case every two minutes. The uh, principal spokesman uh, said if nothing changes, this would in, uh, the sharp increase in the number of people living with dementia will mean that by 2038, the total cost associated with dementia will re reach $153 billion a year. It amounts to a massive cumulative total of $872 billion over a 30-year period. Now, recognizing the urgent need to start turning the tide of dementia, the new report also outlines a series of potential interventions that could help minimize the impact of the disease. For example, one of the four proposed interventions looks at the benefits of delaying the onset of dementia in people by just over uh, by just two years, with a potential cost saving of over two hundred and nineteen billion dollars over that thirty-year period. <coughs> Madam Speaker, hope uh, lies in making changes today that will lessen the dementia's crippling effect on Canadian families the health care system and the economy. And more than ever, research is a critical contributor to this change. And I want to say that the